Yo, 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 how you doing? Uncle Steph here. So, so people are worried that uh, there's going to be a lack of development job, coder jobs out there going into 2025, I'm recording this a few days before Christmas. Let me tell you, from the perspective and experience, somebody who's been doing this since 1994, the jobs are just going to increase quite a bit. Don't be too concerned about that. Yeah, so this whole illusion that the uh, developer market is dropping, no more developer job jobs. This is a, an illusion put out by people who, during the pandemic years, I've talked about this before, because all these big companies were doing what is called defensive hires. They were worried that they were going to run out of people. So they were hiring everybody and their neighbors and the cats and the dead dogs. Everybody was being hired no matter what their abilities were. If you could write a bit of HTML and you, if you copied a $10 tutorial on React, you got a job. And what happened is after the whole pandemic thing uh, died down, they all started laying off people, all the deadwood, all the people who shouldn't have been hired in the first place. So what we have now is a rebalancing, a realignment towards normalcy. Uh, so yeah, plenty of jobs going forward into 2025. So let me give you an example. So I, with my co-conspirators, we took over the board of a luxury condo. I'm, I own one of the units here. And we took it over because we didn't like the way things were being run. We wanted to make the condo great again. So we took it over and we started getting into the weeds of things, how the whole thing was operated. So it was unbelievable to see what we did see. Without going into details about the whole management end of thing, that's a, another story. The software end of things was a big mess. And when I was looking at the software and how the software was implemented, it just gave me more confidence in my assertions that there's plenty of jobs in terms of software development. It's, it's not even close. So when I got into the, the back office, if you will, of this condo building complex, so we have a very big management companies running things and they use a few pieces of software to uh, manage the operations, the bills and the work activity and the contracts. And just the way that the software has been implemented, I'm not even talking about the code. I'm just talking about the three pieces of software, how things are organized. In that broad context, it's two thumbs down from Uncle Steph. It's just a disaster. We're looking around, we're trying to figure things out. Uh, basic functionality that you would figure you would have in this type of software that helps you manage buildings uh, would be there, but it's not there. So without even getting into the quality of the code, because I can't see the code base, because it's uh, proprietary stuff, the way the software is structured, uh, the, the workflows within the software, it just sucks. It's no good. <laughs> there's so much work, there's so much opportunity there, just in terms of uh, repairing the functionality. It's something I talk about all the time. When noobs think about software, they're just thinking about code, the coding and the code purity. And I have to tell you, that's the least of your concerns, actually. What uh, the biggest problem with software these days is the discombobulated nature of how the software is put together. So yeah, there's a lot of problems in the code itself, but there's this big problem just in terms of how usable it is, right? Where the buttons are, uh, what core functionality is it that is exposed to the user so that they can get the job done quickly and easily. Remember, the whole point of software is to speed up processes to automate processes. In terms of, I'm talking about small and big business uh, software. I'm not talking about gaming, uh, you know, or AI. Well, AI is, is all about that too, right? All the point, the whole point of software in general is just to make things easier for, for people. It also allows for things to be done which could not be done before, like, I don't know, social media, instant exchange of information. But even that, that just speeds up the traditional process of exchanging information, which was telephone or writing letters or sending faxes. So anyway, so in this particular condo association, they use three pieces of software, two of them, but are all proprietary. Two of them you never heard of. One is a big one, Monday. And it just, it's, it's not fluid. It's not easy to work with. To get enough information, if you will, to gather enough information with the way the software is structured now, you have to jump to three different pieces of software to get that information. 
And this is not some esoteric deep dive into, uh, into the operations of the system. This is just, you know, top level stuff that uh, condo administrators should know. And it's just not there. It's, it's, it, well, it's there, but you gotta dig for it. Anyway, that, you know, that's it. Uh, the point of this video is A, plenty of jobs, because there's plenty of software up there, out there rather, that sucks. Uh, and I'm not even talking about the code. I'm sure the code is not the greatest either, but I'm just talking about the implementation, meaning how easy it is to work with and what features they bring to the fore. Big part about writing good software is bringing to the fore, bringing to right in front of the user, the, the, their top three to five uh, use cases, meaning guy comes to your guy, girl, bur, bur, user, it, they, them, whatever. They come to your software and what are the top three to five things that they do on a daily basis. That should be obvious. It should be right there. Boom, boop. They shouldn't have to go into submenus to find this functionality or to generate these reports or to uh, do what you need to do. It should be right in the front. Another trick, by the way, as I always insisted, is that I would allow for multiple routes to key functionality, right? So let's say, for the sake of argument, let's say you wanted, it's very common that people want aggregate reports by vendor, uh, by date. I wouldn't restrict that report to one menu item or one top. I would have it in multiple places. If I knew that the user was gonna use this functionality in multiple, you know, often enough, I would allow them different routes to get there. Why not? What's, you know, you, you know, you got to find a balance, of course. You don't want to overcomplicate your software with too many options, too many buttons, because then people get confused. But for key functionality, but you know what they use all the time, it should be uh, it should be pretty obvious. And multiple routes to get there makes sense. So let me give you a classic example. When you are organizing the functionality with an app, there's a hierarchy of uses, right? Or hierarchy of use. The most common thing with the hit secondary level things, tertiary level things, right? Depending on how often you use it, right? If they're gonna generate a particular report once a year, that doesn't, mean, that doesn't need to clutter the top level system, right? Because it's only once a year. But if it's a report they're generating weekly or daily or bi-weekly, something that's done often enough, that should be top level. So one UI trick, one UI structure that is, uh, been around since the 90s, is the breadcrumbs, right? At the top, you see, like in my learning apps to the web, we have the breadcrumbs. So for my application where I have courses and curriculum, so let's say you're in the uh, Python course, we have the Python course, the chapter, the lesson, the question number. So it's, there's a hierarchy. So you can access the different levels of the app hierarchical, hierarchically speaking, through the breadcrumbs, because it's kind of a, what's the word I'm looking for? It's a standard in user interface design, right? It's a standard. But they can also go up and down the hierarchy via a side menu, right? We have a right side menu as well. So we give them two options, cross the top, you know, horizontal and horizontal and vertical, so that they can access what they need to access, because that's common, so they, they go around. Another thing that we do, is because understanding how our users use the software, if they log in, they do a couple, they do a few lessons, answer some quiz questions, then they log out, then come back in. So what we do is re we remember, we remember where they are in the system. So when they come back in and they go click on a course, it takes them right to where they were. So it's, 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 it's a nice little touch it facilitates the use of the software. They don't have to try to remember what chapter was I on and what lesson was I on. So they can go right to it, boom, right? Takes, takes you right there. So, so this facilitates uh, that use case where people would, dro would drop in and out, come in and out, come in and out, come in and out of the software, you know, as they go by, as they go through the days. It's a simple little addition. I'm not saying it's groundbreaking or anything. It's a simple little addition that simple bit of functionality that um, makes using the software a little bit easier. Uh, learning the material, a little bit easier. It remembers where you were, it takes you back where you were. That's cool. Anyway, that's it. Uh, 
I hope this video was useful to you. Uh, I use the condo example in this video because it's something I'm doing right now. Uh, I did not want to do it, by the way. I did not want that power. But uh, due to things we are hurting, little birds are tweeting about some uh, uh, less than optimal operations going on in this complex. We're talking millions of dollars here. And so when I saw the software and how everything was structured, I was like, wow, this is bad. And then it brought me back into thinking about how people are going, oh my God, there's no more software jobs. There's so many software jobs, you have no idea. This. <laughs> Just fixing what's already out there is going to keep people going for years and years. So if you're thinking about learning software, again, most software jobs are going to be for small business. Small business is web. That's it, it's web. It's full stack, front end, back, more, more full stack and back end. Uh, pure front end with React or Vue or something, that's, you know, that's popular. That's more medium and large business, really. So if you want to get into the game, the best way, easiest way to get into the game, especially if you don't have a university degree or something, is you got to go full stack web. Uh, I recommend, so you do HTML5, CSS3, learn some JavaScript, just the fundamentals. Then you want to get into, uh, I would suggest PHP, because small businesses, there's so many small businesses on PHP. So you're gonna find yourself doing that with WordPress, maybe some Shopify, maybe some Drupal. And then as you become more experienced as a developer, you're gonna see that technology is gonna become secondary to you. You know, you might find a project where you do React. You may find a project where, you know, they, they got classic ASP going, some old system. Or maybe you might find yourself doing some uh, Python Django. You never know. But you have to become uh, agnostic about all this. You have to not care whether or not you're writing this or that or the other thing. Anyway, that's another story. So I hope you found this useful. If you like my hat, give me a thumbs up. If you don't like my hat, give me two thumbs down. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you don't like it, give me two thumbs down. Not one, but two. That's it. Comment below. If you have any questions about this video, anything else, comment below. I'll be happy to answer. And uh, if you're watching this before Christmas 2024, is it 20, yeah, 2024? Uh, Merry Christmas, if, if applicable to you. Be well, Happy New Year, and we'll see you in the new year. I'm Uncle Steph. I uh, mentor people in software development, business, all that kind of stuff. I think what's different from my, with my content from others is that I've been doing this since 94, but more importantly, for me, coding has always been a means to an end. Meaning, I always look at the coding tools and the libraries and the frameworks. I look at them as tools to accomplish tasks, to build projects. I have my own SaaS product. My, I've done a few. Uh, I have one now called Studio Web. You can check it out, studioweb.com. I supply schools with curriculum and classroom management tools and even, uh, to a certain extent, uh, multiple classroom or school management tools, managing multiple classrooms and so on. So... Uh, what makes my stuff different, I think, from so many of the coders out there on the YouTubes, first of all, I've done it for real. Second of all, I teach the money making of coding, how you make money, how, uh, how to look at it from a real perspective, whether you got a job, you're freelance or starting a SaaS product, everything I teach is from experience, of course. So it's very money oriented job-oriented, business-oriented, career-oriented teaching. That's why I don't go get into the weeds of things like React and so on, because first of all, there's plenty of, you know, once you know your fundamentals, you don't really need somebody like me to teach you that. Where I'm needed is with the total basics and the fundamentals, because everything comes from the fundamentals. If you got the fundamentals under your, under your belt, if you have a deep understanding of those fundamentals, then everything else is easy. And I teach the very advanced. I teach the very advanced. I teach the money end of things, the very the large architecture end of things. Things that only 20 years plus experience will give you the knowledge of, if you will. Anyway, that's it. Cheers. Hope this uh, is useful to you. Bye-bye.